Well, in the name of Jesus, amen. So as I mentioned in the opening, we're continuing with our Serving Challenge sermon series this evening. We're looking at the concept of action this evening. But before we get to action, I actually want to give you a bit of a test. It's not, you know, everybody's going, oh, that's okay. There's no right or wrong answer to this test. This is actually a personality test. But I invite you to look at these three columns of words this evening. Read those three columns. Hopefully you can see that green one. Maybe you can see it easier here. But I invite you to look at those three columns and pick which color, or maybe two colors, best describes you. And just memorize it. Like I said, no right or wrong answers, but thank you for sharing, buddy. And at the same time, pick which one or two of those, we put it back up there, sound booth, which one of those two maybe least describes you? All right. So best, which, which one or two best describe you, which one or two least describe you? There are no right or wrong answers here. These, this col- these columns, these questions actually come from a book I read a decade ago called Three Colors of Ministry by a gentleman named Christian Swartz. He's a German theologian. He's an author. He does a lot with church development and individual discipleship development. These words are from there. But when I read them and I was just thinking about this sermon, I realized those three columns are familiar to me because they're the terms we've been working on, the aspects we've been working on so far in the serving challenge when we've been looking at the aspects of Jesus. So you put the circle up. There we go. Attitude, availability, and action. I even color-coded them the same way as those columns. So if you were strong and green, that's an attitude thing, right? People are laughing. (laughs) But I want to invite you to realize that these three aspects are, of course, about Jesus, that Jesus does these things perfectly. So for the the sake of the next couple of slides, I want you to recognize that that rainbow circle in the middle there represents the perfection of Christ because he does all these things perfectly. We know this because our text that we've been working through for this series comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 11, but we're going to look at 5 to 8 this evening when St. Paul writes these words, and I've color-coded the words to match the columns. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset, so that's attitude, with Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, and here's availability, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself. There's your blue. There's your action for this evening. These are three aspects that Paul uses to describe Christ. And he says we should have them too. We should model ourselves after after Christ. But Christ does these things perfectly, right? And if you took the test, and if you're honest with yourself, and there's no right or wrong answers here, you probably had one weak, one of those three was a weak area, right? That you're not quite good at that one, even if you're good at the other two that none of us have mastered and perfected ourselves like Christ has. So like I said, I did this book, I took this, I read this book 10 years ago, this Three Colors of Ministry book, and it's actually a a much more complex test than what I just gave you. It was really kind of unscientific I gave you a moment ago. But when I took the test itself years ago, these were my answers. They even rate you on the answers. But here's mine. This was me 10 years ago. You can see my green is really, really high. Certainly in comparison to the other two, the My attitude is really strong. Some people will laugh at that. But my availability, my action, those categories, they're my weaknesses. And so you get these stats when you do this book, and they paint a a separate picture. So this yellow circle, it represents me. And if the rainbow circle represents Christ, and I'm over here, I'm off center. Christ may be perfect. I am not. I'm over here. And depending on your answer, every one of you is somewhere, would be somewhere around here. Having read The Serving Challenge, having watched the videos of Pastor Zender, the author of this book, I would actually venture to guess he's way over here in availability, way over on the red side. And this is a good thing because we do have strengths. It's not to say that we stink at all three of these things. We actually have strengths. God has given us strengths. Strengths to serve one another. The strengths will be different for each one of us in the room. But we've been given these strengths to serve each other and to glorify God through the the use of those, those areas. But there's work that can be done. One of the main points of the Three Colors of Ministry book 
is for us to lean into our, into our negative areas, our, our weaknesses. Actually, Christian Schwartz describes it this way in his book. When I have studied biblical examples of this kind, my attention has been drawn to the way God deals with imperfect people like me. He doesn't start by rebuking their weak points, but rather acknowledges the areas in which they are already strong. Translated into the terms of our three-color diagram this evening, he starts by accepting the value of their most dominant colors. And then, sometimes very gently, sometimes quite drastically, he opens their eyes to areas in which they are not yet strong and helps them enter into those areas. I invite you to realize, can we put that... Isabel, look up at the slide of Mia back up there. I may be here, but Christ, this represents Christ. And so for me to grow, to be more Christ-like, which is what discipleship is, my direction is to go this way. Now for you, if you're over here, you're over here, you're over here, you have a different direction to go. This way, this way, this way. It'd be a mistake to stand here and say, for us to grow as a church, we all got to go this way. Because we all have different starting points. So which ones are you? What color are you strongest in? What color are you maybe weakest in? Because God will use the strong points to serve others and glorify his most holy name. But there will be options and opportunities and moments to work on the weak areas too, to move towards the center, that Christ-like center for us. So like I said, our topic is action this week, and my area of weakness is action. So we're going to look at a, a moment when somebody is called into a very large Step of action. And that's from our Old Testament reading, the book of Esther, the story of Esther that we heard a moment ago. We heard portions of it because it's, it's a long, and it's actually a, a, a story that's got a lot of different parts in it. So I was very selective in what we read this evening to just kind of get to the point of it. But Esther, Esther's a story in the Old Testament, a book of the Old Testament, and it has the unique and odd distinction that it's the only book of the Bible that doesn't actually mention God. Now, God is all over the book, once you read it, but he's never actually by name mentioned. But the story of Esther starts with the king of Persia, a guy named Xerxes, getting divorced. He gets divorced from his wife, and he decides he wants to, uh, he wants to get married again. So he scours his kingdom for the most beautiful woman he can find, and once you know, it's Esther. So he marries her. What he doesn't realize is that, is that she is of Jewish descent. She's Jewish. Because she is a part of the exiles. This is the period of Israelite history when the Jews had been driven out of Jerusalem. Jerusalem had been destroyed and the people had been taken forcibly to Babylon and to Persia. And so for Esther and her group, they're in the nation of Persia, which is modern day Iran now. So they're there. And while they're there, trouble starts. So there's a fellow named Haman who was in our Old Testament reading. And Haman's an official of the king. And Haman thinks way too highly of himself. And he wants all of the other officials in the king's court to bow down to him. Bow down to me. I'm the coolest. And it sounds like almost all of them do it, except for one guy who won't do it, and his name is Mordecai. Mordecai is another official of the king. Mordecai is also, of course, Jewish. Mordecai is the uncle of Esther and actually has raised Esther like his own daughter. So there's a real tight connection there. But Mordecai will not bow down and praise Haman. And Haman gets so mad about this and so incensed by this, he decides he's not just going to kill Mordecai, he's going to kill all of Mordecai's people just to show him up. You were talking about genocide of the Jews here. And this is a situation that still, still takes place and still a problem in this world, right? I mean, the, the current conflict in Israel and Gaza right now was over an attempt to Exterminate the Jews. We're not that far away from World War II and the Holocaust of the Jews. There, always been, been, there has always been, probably always will be people who seek to exterminate the Jewish people. God's chosen people, the Bible says. Haman almost succeeds. He tricks King Xerxes into signing the agreement to have them killed. And Mordecai learns of this. Mordecai finds out, and as we talked about on Ash Wednesday several weeks ago, as we heard in the reading a moment ago, this is when Mordecai puts on the sackcloth and ashes and grieves his people. They are going to die. But Mordecai takes action. He goes to his niece. Hey, you got to help. And they have a quick exchange, but Mordecai says this in Esther chapter 4. 
Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows? But that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Which is one of the most profound statements Mordecai makes. It's where God shows up. Mordecai says, Maybe all of this was arranged. All of these things came to be, so you are here at this moment, Esther. If you were here on Sunday, you heard Pastor Lee talk about the little actions, little actions of others, little actions of ourselves that make us who, the, who we are, the people we are right now. Little actions combined together. Think about Esther. Xerxes gets divorced. She happens to be beautiful. Her uncle happens to be an official in the court. They have a close father-daughter relationship. All these little things had put Esther in a position to intercede, to take action, a dramatic action to save her people because she knows the risk she's taking. If you heard in the reading, she can't just go in and talk to her husband. That's not allowed. If you go in and talk to the king and you don't have his permission, he can, he can execute you. She was facing the wrath of Xerxes by taking this action. And she did it anyway. And of course, her people are saved. The Jews are saved. Haman instead gets the penalty that he wanted for the Jews. He gets killed. And the people are safe. And to this day, the Jewish people celebrate this event with the season of Purim, which is in fact only about a week and a half away. It's actually the same weekend for us as Palm Sunday. They'll be celebrating that festival soon. And they celebrate it to this day that Esther took action to intercede on the people's behalf. Esther, like Jonah two weeks ago, like Philip the deacon last week, had an attitude or an action that looked like Christ. Because Esther dares to stand before her king to face his wrath to save her people. Jesus stands before his father and his father's wrath because Jesus took action. He took action by coming down and being a man and humbling himself, dying on a cross for us. Because God wasn't mad at him, he was mad at us. God's wrath is kindled against sin, our rebellion, our, our troubles. God's wrath was kindled against that. But Jesus stands before his Father's wrath, wrath in our place. He saves his people. That's us. Jesus takes an action, a unique action, the cross. That alone is Jesus' job. We'll talk about that next week. But Esther had a unique action she could take too. That she was, as Mordecai pointed out, uniquely positioned to care for somebody, her whole people in this case, in that exact moment. A unique action was hers. And I like how, again, Pastor Lee talked about on Sunday how little actions, unique little actions available to us can make such a difference in people's lives. It reminds me of what we heard in the second reading this evening from Romans chapter 8, the famous words from verse 28. And we know that in all things good, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We often turn to this verse when our lives are a mess, when we're facing turmoil, conflict, pain. We see this verse from the inside out. We know there's problems and we're looking for the good in the world. And the, the things we're talking about are not good of themselves. I mean, cancer is not good. Natural disasters are not good. The genocide of the Jewish people is not good. But God has a unique way of making good happen. Good come out of these tragedies, these terrors. That's why, where I see the concept of action taking place. Because like I said, when we often think about that verse, we're in the middle of, of conflict in our lives. We want to see the good. But what if you thought about it from the outside looking in? And the people around you, the, your loved ones, your friends, your neighbors, they're the ones experiencing the terrors and the turmoil. And they're looking for good. And when we can take an action, maybe a, a little action, a gentle action, maybe a dramatic action, like Christian Schwartz suggests, we can bring the good into that person's life. The one who needs to see Jesus, needs to see God show up in their lives. God's equipping us and putting the opportunities in front of us 
to be the good in somebody else's life, to take action for somebody else's sake. Jesus has taken action to love us by going to the cross, the most unique option, opportunity available to him. And we have been loved, and we have this now this incredible opportunity to take that same love into the lives of others whose lives are in turmoil, who are facing destruction. And say, God loves you. Here's how I can serve you. But that's a blue action. Because like I said, I'm a green. And for me to grow, I need to grow in the blue direction. Take action, Eric. I went over there. They were already done packing the meals. or packing the, the, the military boxes. By the way, just a complete aside, just so I don't forget it later, there will be no packing after the service because we got it all done. 112 boxes were packed this evening for our, vet, our service folks across the world. But don't go back there. There's nothing to do tonight. People have taken action this evening, but that's, that's stretching ourselves into the blue direction. But maybe you're already good at serving. Maybe we got people who have been at every serving event we've offered so far. we got people that sign up for every volunteer project we have. They are good at the blue. So maybe your stretching is this way into the green or this way into the red. God's going to give you those opportunities too. Ways you can show up. Little ways, dramatic ways to stretch into what is our weak areas. Because like Christian Swartz says, God's going to give us plenty of opportunities to use our strengths to serve one another, to glorify his most holy name. But there's always opportunities to grow, grow in the way that at least that little unscientific test says, maybe I'm weak at. That maybe when somebody is facing troubles, you can share that verse from Romans. That'd be a green action to share a Bible verse with somebody, share wisdom of God with somebody. Or maybe somebody's going through troubles and you sit down there and you shed a tear with them. That would be a red action, serving another person, to experience what they're experiencing. And whatever way is for you to grow, whether it's blue, red, or green, or some combination of the, of the three, God gives us opportunities to stretch in that direction. See, what's our tagline here at Our Savior? What is it? We point people to Christ. What does Christian Swartz say? God's going to give us opportunities, little and dramatic ways to grow, to point us to Christ. God is pointing us to Christ. Think about that. That when God gives us areas or opportunities to stretch into the places that make us uncomfortable, he's actually pointing us towards the center of that circle where we too can become more like his son. We're being pointed to Jesus by our God. It's a incredible thought. And when we use those opportunities, when we use our gifts, when we use our weaknesses, we're showing the love of Christ into somebody's life who needs it. That through our attitude, through our availability, and through our actions, we can serve somebody in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Now may the peace of God which transcends your hearts and minds keep yourselves in Christ Jesus until the day he returns. Amen.